everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is we're gonna make a bunch of bows <laughs> today. Uh, Miss Laurie over there, Creative Laurie, asked me to show again how I make my tiered bow. So that'll be one kind that I make, and this is this is a tiered bow like this. And it's tiered because it's smaller at the top and larger at the bottom. So that is a tiered bow. So I'm gonna be showing how to make one of those. And then, uh, the tiered bow is the one, I've been making this bow for, how long have I been married? 30, 35, 36 years. This was the only kind of bow I knew how to make, even when I came on to, uh, YouTube at first. This is the only kind of bow that I knew how to make. So since I've been on YouTube, I've taught myself how to make a round bow, which is a bow like this, and it's similar to the tiered bow, only all of the loops are the same size. And I don't measure these, I eyeball them. I will be honest with you. But I'm gonna show you how to make a, a circular bow too. And these are the bows, this is actually one I pulled this off of my uh, staircase here that I usually make for the staircase. So I'll be teaching you how to make one of these too. And then of course, I'm gonna be doing a few funky bows too. Now I learned the funky bow uh, from a lady over there at Southern Charms Wreaths named Julie Samaka. I learned how to do the basic concept of the funky bow. That is, I Googled one time, I Googled, I would like to make a bow with various ribbons, various, Pattern, patterns of ribbons and she came up and that's where I learned the basic concept. Since then I've tweaked it to make it my own, you know. And, but that's where I learned how to do it and I like to give credit where credit is due as you know. So, but I will be teaching you how to do a few funky, funky bows too. And I have a couple of examples here, of big ones and small ones and everything. And I've got an array of ribbons here that I just picked out. I don't, I'm not planning anything right now except for my fall decor. I'm going to be doing that. But I don't want to make any fall ribbons today be, or fall bows today because I want to save that for when I decorate for fall, you know, so that I can have my tutorials in with my fall decor. So I'm just going to be making, I've just pulled out some, you know, an array of ribbon here and I'm going to be using different kinds to make different bows. So I will be right back once I get my camera. I'm going to put my camera over to my, to my right here so that you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing. You can't really tell what I'm doing from this, this, uh, this direction. So I will be right back in just a few minutes when I get my camera situated. Okie dokie, I'm back. And as you can see, I've got all of my ribbons kind of spread out here. I have no idea really what I'm making out of what yet. But I thought I would start with a tiered bow. And I thought I would just pull out some of this really pretty peach, peach ribbon that I haven't used but for one wreath upstairs. And I thought I could maybe put this in the little bathroom upstairs, in the happy bathroom just as a little accent somewhere up there. So I, thought I, would so I thought I would start with this. This is two and a half inch wired ribbon. And again, I, I, I do want to emphasize this. This is not wired ribbon, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. This is a four or five inch ribbon. I'm actually going to cut it in half and make a funky bow out of that, I think. But usually I use wired ribbon to make all of my bows. So, I mean, very rarely will I use a non-wired ribbon. And some people like them non-wired. I don't, I, I, I prefer them to be, to be wired. So, first thing you do is pull out a bunch of ribbon. There's really no rhyme or reason to how I do this. I just kind of pull out as much as I think I'll need. And how you start a tiered bow is you hold it in your, the hand that is not your dominant hand. In other words, my right hand is my, I'm right-handed. My right hand is my dominant hand. So I always hold my bows or my ribbon or my loops or whatever you want, however you want to say it, in my non-dominant or my left hand. So the way I start this bow is I just hold it right side up. This is one-sided ribbon, so right side up. And the first thing I do is I make a loop. Now the first loop, that's not gonna help you see, is it? The first loop that I make in a tiered bow is important. 
because that will determine the size of the bow in the end. So I want to look at the first two loops that I make. Come down this way, so I just make one loop. And then I leave myself a little overlap here, as you can see, because I'm going to come up with this and this is going to attach here. And I want to make sure that when I go to manipulate the loops of this bow that it doesn't pull out, especially with this ribbon because it's really kind of silky. So I kind of give myself probably a couple of inch overlap there. And I look at this loop and I say, yeah, I kind of like that to be the, first, the size of the first loop. So then I come down here and I make another loop and I making sure to leave my overlap there. I kind of try to make the loops about the same size and then I pinch together like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a little tiny loop for the cent what will be the center of the bow. So now is, now is when I do that. So I just, I twist this around to bring the right side up and then I kind of just, just turn it around my finger in a way. I kind of just loop it under and grab it with my thumb and my forefinger and pinch it together, just like that. And then I twist it around again to get that right side up and go in the right direction again. And that gives me a little loop for the center. So there I've got my first two, bow, two loops that should be about the same size in the center loop. Now I'm going to make a four loop tiered bow. And what I mean by four loop, it just means that I'm going to have four loops on each side of center. Now the next loop that I make, I'm going to make it about no more than about a half an inch longer than the first loop that I made. And I'm telling you guys, I do not measure these, I just eyeball it, honest to goodness. And then I make the loop and catch it underneath, twist it, and it's, and it's going to naturally be fed the way you're going to need it to be fed. So then I come out this way. And again, I don't make it any more than a half an inch longer than the, the loop before it. See that? So that's two. And I twist it again to bring the right side up. And then I'm gonna go for my third loop. Again, no more than a half an inch longer. You can make it longer if you want. I don't like to make it. Let me just preface that by saying you can make it any way you want. This is just the way I've always done it and I am happy with the way they work out. So as you saw, I just made one loop and caught it underneath and then I'm gonna come out this way again and make another one. Again, not being any more than about a half an inch longer, tuck it in underneath and that has given me three loops on each side of center. So now we need two more. I'm gonna twist it again. One more on each side. Again, no more than about a half an inch longer. Tuck it underneath there. And twist. And one more. Pinch together. And there we go. That has given us a four loop tiered bow. Now, to make some tails, I twist it again. And how I do three tails is, if I can get the ribbon going in the right direction here, I go and I pull it out about from my nose to, my, to the end of my hand, see that? And I turn it, see how I did that? I just turn it to bring the right side up underneath and pinch it together and that gives me two loops and then the tail this one last tail that's still attached to the bolt will give me the third loop I'm gonna pull it off of there pipe cleaner and I'm going to feed it through the loop over my thumb but through the loop and then I could take it to about the center point and then I kind of lift my thumb as best I can and grab it with my thumb and then I pull it around 
the front, the bottom, if you will, and the top. And again, using this hand as resistance, I pull against it and I get these fingers up as close as I possibly can to the back of the bow and I twist. And I twist both the bow and the pipe cleaner. A lot of people just twist the bow. Some people twist the pipe cleaner, just the pipe cleaner. Whatever works for you works. It's, anyway, so I there we go. There's a tiered bow. Next thing I want to do is get my tails the length that I want them to be. So I'm just going to cut that one big loop that I made in half. And then I'm going to cut this loop almost up to size. Now I had used this, as I said, I made one other bow out of this, but that used up the rest of the, the ribbon on this. And I'm not gonna keep this little piece. This was 18 feet. So I got about two tiered bows. You go through a lot more ribbon when you're only do when you're doing these tiered bows or round bows than you do when you do funky bows. Because you're only using a portion of it when you're using funky bows, you know? All right, so there's our tiered bow. Isn't that pretty? I think they are a pretty bow, pretty little bow. It's hard to make them really big though because they lose their shape if you do. So anyway, all right, the way I normally do the tails, as you can see that they kind of naturally fall, one, two, three. So I'm just gonna go with it and say these two are my ends and this one is the middle. So what I do is I just decide, oh, how long do I think I want my tails? Oh, I'll make them that long. Again, I just eyeball it. I do not measure. I'm really sorry, you guys, I don't measure. <laughs> so then I want the tail on the right to match the tail on the left. So I just go over here and I cut up at an angle. Just like that. And then I dovetail the center one. And I usually do the center just a little bit longer I do the sides. So there we go. And of course, once you get it hung where you want it to hang, you can manipulate it and fluff it. And this is already pretty fluffed, but you know, I do take the time and fluff it too once I get it into, into shape. So there we go. Our first tiered bow. And you can make them as little the loops as little or as big as you want. I would not do many more than four loops. I have done them before, but it's kind of negates the point. They kind of get lost in the shuffle. Uh, so I usually keep it at four. I've, I've done five and six loops and they look okay, but I, I prefer them to be around three or four loops, to be honest. And there we go. Our first little tiered bow. with that pretty corally pinky color. Okay, I should have got myself a garbage bag. Let's see. How about if we make a round bow, but let's make it out of this. This is my favorite country pot. I've got some here. I don't know whether I have enough on there, so I'll save that for a funky bow. Okay, again, I just pull out a bunch of ribbon from the bowl. And again, you guys, I just eyeball this. I honest to goodness do. Okay, first of all, I do leave a little bit of a tail. This is going to be one of the tails. And you know, there are times that I'll measure it to be, you know, a foot long, you know, or so. Anyway, so just, you know, eyeball it, see how much of a tail you want, and then pinch. And then you're gonna make your first loop. And I usually make my loops around five to six inches. Again, I just eyeball it. And you pull that underneath and let me just tell you what it is. I ended up with a five inch loop. And then you just come, now this is two sided ribbon, but if you need to twist, you could just twist and bring the right side up. And again, I eyeball it. You know, I can bring it over and measure it if I want. I've always just eyeballed it. So I'm just going to do three loops on each side, the same size. I'm not going to make them longer. I'm gonna make them the same size. Actually, this is going to be a seven loop round bow. 
These are easy peasy to make and they make a pretty statement, you know, like for a staircase, like at your swag points, which is where I use this kind of bow all the time. This is a pretty bow for a wreath too. Sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. See him is hungry, I guess. He's over there barking. I'm not worrying about twisting this ribbon because this truly is two-sided ribbon. Okay, so there's three loops on each side of center. I want to make one more loop. What's wrong, buddy? So that's seven loops. And then that will be your other tail. And I'll explain what I'm going to do. Let me get my pipe cleaner. Same concept. Some people stop and put a loop in. I have never done it that way. I make a separate loop for the center. I'll show you. Twist and then cut it off of the bowl or off of the roll. we're gonna fluff but first thing I'm gonna do is I pull this tail down and I attach it in to the pipe cleaner also as I said I make myself a little loop Which is just I cut a piece and this is about seven inches long and then I just kind of turn it on itself and have a good overlap and then I just pinch it together grab another pipe cleaner around the front weave my pipe cleaner through and follow the same way the pipe cleaner did. And I just attach that center tail or center loop. And then I fluff. This is probably one of the simplest bows there is to make, honestly. And you do have to fiddle with it, you know, and get it to go the way you want it. That's about it. And there are times when this one frustrates me more than others because this is all there is. I made that one a little too long. But you can always manipulate it and make it look the same. And then I usually just do either two dovetails. How I do the dovetail is I just fold the material in half and cut up from the edge. A lot of people cut down from the fold. Doesn't matter, it makes the same, gives you the same result. There you go. Seven loop round bow. Isn't that pretty? Now I don't know whether a lot of people pull that other tail down. They might do it a different way. This is just, I taught myself how to do this. So I just made it, manipulated it to how I like to do it. So that's how I do it is I just pull that one tail down and tuck it into the pipe cleaner and pull it down and so that they're both pointing the right direction or the same direction. So there we go. There is a round bow. I like that. I'm thinking about making a bunch of round bows like this for my staircase for after Christmas because I've got really big fat bows for Christmas that I put up there. Made in the same way as this. But just with okay you guys let's make a small funky bow so 
small, meaning about a nine loop funky bow. I know that sometimes I make massive funky bows and I really don't wanna, I wanna try to make a couple that you know, might seem a little easier to you guys. First thing I wanna do though, to be honest with you, is I wanna cut a couple of strips at 20 with this big non-wire ribbon. And then what I'm gonna do, I just want a nine, come on now, nine loop funky bow. But what I wanna do is I wanna cut this in half. Now I'm just eyeballing this, again, just to kind of cut it in half though, because I don't want this big wide ribbon in it. So there's two pieces. And then do one more. There we go. All right, put that one aside. So there I have three strips of this pretty burgundy ribbon. Even though it's not wired, I think it's gonna work in this bow, and I'll show you why. All right, now I need three more of each of these. Okie dokie, I'm back. And as you can see, I've got three strips of each ribbon cut at 20 inches long each. And I've dovetailed the ends of everything. So I'm ready to start making this nine loop funky bow. The reason I cut them at 20, each strip at 20 inches long is because I want five inch tails and five inch loops. So with five inch tails, I need five at this end and five at this end for five inch tails. And then I wanna pull the 10 inches together to make a five inch loop. In effect, in reality, you only have to fold it in half, fold each loop in half. And so put it on your board and make sure you have a five inch loop and pinch it together at that spot. And I always go to the back tail and I twist it around. Even though this looks like double sided ribbon, unlike that burgundy one, it's really not. I can tell it's texturally different. So I like to bring, especially if it's texturally different, I like to twist it and bring it forward. Now, because this is an odd looped funky bow, I want to switch directions each time I add a loop to my hand. So this time I go and I find my five inch loop, I turn it and I'm going to point that loop down from center, center being my thumb up from center, down from center. Again, a five inch loop. Again, I go behind and I twist. Now here we go with this non-wired burgundy ribbon here. We're gonna see if this is gonna work. I think because two of the ribbons are wired and when this the whole thing gets made, it's going to hold this. And because I'm not making the loops really, really big, I think it's gonna hold its shape just fine. And I'm gonna try to twist this, this doesn't, it tends not to want to, doesn't want to stay sometimes when I use this kind of ribbon. But there we go, there's our first three loops. Now I want to go through the pattern again. And again, each time I go, I'm going to twist or point that loop the opposite direction each time. Center. And twist. 
I did, didn't I? <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. There we go. My mind wanders when I do this stuff. loops added in and as I've made this bow you can see that it's taken up I've I've let it take up my whole crook of my finger you can see that it's there's a lot of ribbon in there and I'm holding on tight to it with just the two fingers get a pipe cleaner put it over the top wrap it around again using the hand that you're holding the bow shut with, the loop shut with as resistance, and twist. There we go. Now that is a mess right now, but like I always say, the most important part is to fluff, fluff, fluff. And get, those, and get your hand in there and down to where it is cinched together, you know? I also take some time to separate the tails out sometimes. And with this length of a tail, some of the tails will naturally want to, you know, creep up into the bow and it's fine and dandy if they do that. Yeah, I think I like this burgundy in with it. Bow. You know what? I think I'm going to make a funky bow just out of this. Wouldn't that be pretty just to make one all this out of all the same? And I'm going to make it nine again. Nine loops, I think. I have no idea where I'll put that, but I'll find somewhere maybe in the fall to put that in that pretty. I love that. But I wanted to show you a funky bow with different ribbons, and then I'll do a funky bow with just one And again, I think I'll do it at 20 uh, inches each. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut me some ribbon. I'm gonna cut nine pieces of this ribbon. I'll be right back and get them dovetailed. I'm back, I've got nine strips now. By the way, I got this ribbon, if you all were wondering, from Hobby Lobby. I paid, uh, I used one of my coupons for it. I believe this was from Hobby Lobby. So this year, I just bought this not long ago. I'm really liking this. It's very nice ribbon, you guys. All right, I have nine strips at 20, and I'm just going to simply switch directions with this every time I add a loop in. I'm gonna find my five inch loop. Go back, twist it. Each time, this is truly, you know what? This is truly, tr yeah, maybe not. Maybe it does look a little different. So I'm gonna keep the twist and action going on the tails. Plus it helps to separate them anyway. I'm gonna switch directions every time. Even though I'm doing all one color, or one pattern, I still want to switch directions. all one color like this still take the time to get your hand in side of those loops and make them big and fat and flouncy fluff 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 I should have worn my t-shirt oh, I forgot to put my t-shirt on I meant to ah. shucks <laughs> next time I will be sure my spiffy fluff 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 t-shirt on that Maria got me. There we go. A big funky bow made out of all one pattern. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Man, oh man, that might be my favorite of the day, you guys. That is pretty. 
I hope this goes half price soon, or I hope they still have some, because I think I might like to get me some more of this. That is pretty. So that's it, you guys. I think that about covers all the bows that I make. Of course, I make funky, bigger funky bows with more loops and longer, longer strips, which just give me longer tails, really and truly. So I think I will make one more tiered bow for you just to give you one more idea of how to do it. Let's make it out of this. I never did use this. I got this at uh, AC Moore, I think, last spring, and I never did use it for anything because I was doing that uh, Pioneer Woman, and it really didn't match that. Let's make one out of this. And again, you just pull a bunch of ribbon out. Find the end. Start out making one loop about the size you think it's going to be, and remember, leave yourself some overlap. And then come down here and make a loop going up, overlapping that part, and pinching it together. This is thicker ribbon than that corally one was. So then what you want to do is you're going to make your center loop now. So you twist it to bring the right side up and then you kind of turn it around your forefinger. Just turn it around there and grab it with your other forefinger and thumb underneath and then twist and then pinch it together. And that gives you your center loop. Twist. Take it out. And again, your ribbon is going to be fed the way you need it to be fed. And again, no more than a half an inch bigger than the row of loops that you just made. It's coming out this side, I'm gonna need to twist it. Again. Pinch it together. A lot of people will pull them up to check them like that. You can do that if you want, but I don't tend to, to do that too much. Again, I'm gonna make a four loop tiered bow, which just means four loops on either side of center twist and come out this side. And if you're consistent, you don't need to pull them up and check. Hands starting to cramp now, you guys. I'm gonna have to quit after this one. Whew. It's hurting. And twist. One more loop on each side. All right, now, for that big long tail, take it out, put it about up to my nose, and grab the back of it and twist it up. And pinch it together underneath, and then cut your other tail about the same length. Cut it off of the roll. Grab your pipe cleaner. Feed it underneath the little loop and over your thumb ring. Look what I'm trying to do. I'm going to try to put it through my thumb ring. I've done that before, you guys. Tied the bow right onto my fingers. <laughs> Feed it all the way through. Grab it and twist it around. And again, using this hand as resistance, getting this the fingers from this hand up as close as you can and twist. have the beginning of a tiered bow. Now, if you just left it like that, it wouldn't be very pretty, huh? I know that I harp endlessly about this fluffing, you guys, but honest to goodness, it really does make a huge difference 
in any kind of bow that you make, really and truly. Just mess with it until you get it going the way you want. This is really thick, 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 thick ribbon. You can make a pretty bow once it's done. But. Okay, let's cut this in half. And lay your tails out and kind of let them fall where they will. And again, I cut the two end pieces. Put a little cotton on this. This is really cute ribbon. About the same length. Oops, so I kind of didn't quite get that right. And then dovetail the center. And there we go. Another pretty tiered bow. That would be really pretty with some of you guys that you do your uh, farmhouse stuff. Look at the cotton on that. Isn't that cute? Really cute. I have no idea where I'll put this, but I'll find a place somewhere. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll be back for some final words in just a second. Okie dokie, guys, I'm back, and I'm finished with my bow extravaganza. <laughs> Let's see. Let me go over the bows that I made for you again today. made this pretty little tiered coral-colored bow. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Just a little tiered bow. Again, these can be used anywhere you want. I mean, you know, I made a bunch of these actually for Stacy's wedding when she got married. I made a bunch of like this, uh, and she put them on her candle abras, like in front of the church. So there we go. The color of this is one of her colors. Anyway, I made a couple of, and then here's another one, tiered bow, and then I made a round bow. And then I made a couple of funky bows. I made this one, which I really liked how that one turned out. And this is, it's its kind of getting a little bit mm, not so loopy. It'll, it'd be okay once I would get it tied to something that I would make sure that these were manipulated and fluffed. But I like it, it turned out cute. And then this one, I think this gets my prize for my favorite one of the day. <laughs> Just because I love plaids. I really do. I love plaids and I love a funky bow made out of all of one type of ribbon. I really, really, really like that. So that's it. That's it for this one. I hope that that helped you learn how to do a couple of different kinds of bows. And uh, if you have any requests, I'd be glad to, to do videos for the future. I don't have a lot going on right now, so it might be a good time if you have a request for, you know, a different kind of bow. You know, I can uh, show you how to make bigger funky bows or whatever. So uh, just let me know if you have any requests and I'd be glad to try to bring that to fruition for you. But anyway, I'm going to bring this one to a close for now. Later in the week, I'm, not, I'm still not sure what's going on uh, toward the end of this week. I'm not positive my cousins are coming. But for now, I'm going to say I'm going to go live on Wednesday afternoon at 2. And we'll just have, I have a couple of things to haul for you guys, and I don't know what else I'm going to be doing. Uh, just I'm going to say doing that I hope that there's nobody struggling with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain. And if you are, I hope that you have somebody there with you who's taking care of you each day and helping you get through each day the very best that you can. I hope that there's nothing weighing on your heart or in your mind, pulling your attention away from where it should be or where you want it to be. And I love you all to bits, and I keep you in my thoughts and prayers all the time. And I will see you Wednesday for my live on Wednesday at 2 instead of Friday at 2 this week. But with that, I'll just say until next time, y'all take good good care. Bye-bye. I came back again, you guys. Got a little bonus footage. I decided I had just a little bit left on this 
roll. I'm gonna make a tiered bow out of the rest of this, but first I'm gonna make a cute little funky bow all out of the same ribbon again, just this. And I just had a little bit of this left, so I just wanted to make a couple of bows out of it. And I thought, well, why don't I just bring you guys along? You know, and I'm not gonna worry about twisting the tails on this. I just wanna do this really quick. I've got, I'm doing a nine loop funky bow. I'm twisting it each time I go. Just wanna do it real quick for you guys. Just to show you, I just think this red and white gingham is just as cute as could be. And I only had a little bit left and I wanted to use the rest up. So, let's just zip this thing right together. Of course, my camera angle is not the best. <laughs> go. Cute. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And all of the tails kind of are just a flouncy as can be, which is fine. Oh, how cute. How cute is this? Cute, huh? It down for a second. Here we go. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, let me do one more tiered bow out of whatever I have left here. I don't have much left, so I'm not sure how far I'll get. It'll just be a little bow. It's really, I have that much left. So I'm gonna make the loop really little and then come up and make it really little. Pinch it together. Twist. And around that forefinger, even make it littler. No more than about a quarter of an inch longer, if that. I don't think I'm gonna get much more than three loops on this little bow. Three meaning three on each side of center. <laughs> With one little tail. the loop. Not pull it around. Tight. And there we have a cute little tiered bow. <laughs> How cute is that? little dovetail. Here we go. Cute, cute. All right. Now that's it. See you Wednesday. Bye-bye.